All right, man. So uh, before we actually get into like the injury that you're dealing with, uh, what you saw when you came here, the results they had, all that sort of stuff, just kind of give us a little bit of uh, background about your training history and all that. That'll kind of um, set the stage for everything going forward. And then we'll get into the specifics after that. All right. So my name's Sam McHugh. I'm a amateur jujitsu and MMA athlete. Um, I've been doing my sport for a little over 10 years now. Um, I grew up playing sports like wrestling and football and a lot of um, active and contact sports as a kid as well um, and other martial arts too. Um, after high school, I started working and training as a strength coach, which just led me deeper into the realm of sports and athletics. And that's what uh, got me injured. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah man so uh, tell me a little bit like uh, about the actual injury that you had like when and how it happened um how it affected you after the initial injury all that so the initial injury that led me to come and work with barbell physical therapy and performance was a left knee injury i was demonstrating a uh, half turkish get up and I was showing the correct angle to lean over and put your hand down versus an incorrect angle of leaning backwards. Um, and as I was demonstrating the incorrect angle, uh, without any weight, I just heard a nasty pop in my knee. Um, and at first it felt okay, but then within like 10 minutes, I was uh, swollen to twice the size and not walking right and didn't walk right for a couple of weeks. Um, the job that I was at at the time um, mismanaged the situation. So I ended up not getting any workman's compensation or coverage whatsoever. Um, and actually had to fight tooth and nail to just even get seen by a doctor, um, through the company that I was with. Um, so that's what led me to look for some, uh, out of pocket options instead of trying to go through insurance anyways, and working, with a physical therapist who didn't either want to just go to a cortisone injection right away or uh, tell me to stop all activity whatsoever because that's just not the lifestyle I live personally and or professionally. I can't just stop being active with my clients um, and there's no way I want to stop being active in general as an athlete. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, that's uh, it sounds like a very similar story to like what most people who work with us uh, experience is that they have uh, an initial injury that they're dealing with. And then either because of poor experiences with other healthcare providers, be it physical therapists, physicians, whoever, just being like, yeah, just stop lifting, stop doing BJJ, all that sort of stuff. And they're looking for um, providers that will actually listen to them, kind of hear what their goals are and help work them towards those goals uh so after that initial injury happened and got like really swollen and all that sort of stuff over the next couple weeks like from there how was it impacting training grappling just like your overall lifestyle uh so i spent about another year um kind of just like dealing with it um and it impact i stopped training um and it in any type of like consistency or frequency because I just felt really limited and a lot of movements uh, hurt. And I wasn't sure if I was still just dealing with like a damaged joint that wasn't getting any better or was continually getting damaged. I just had no answers for myself. So it impacted my quality of training severely, which then in turn impacted the quality of my life pretty severe because working out is definitely something that helps me with not only my physical health, but my mental health as well. Yeah. So it was definitely a long road. What sort of um, like ramifications outside of just the being able to train and lift consistently, did you like find happen with your lifestyle after that uh, injury and being kind of limited for so long? Um, I really just stopped trying to pursue the my next level of fitness goals or my next level of any goal really um and just kind of was dealing with feeling injured and making it feel like this is just what i'm going to have to deal with for the rest of my life now um besides uh going back to an orthopedic or a physical therapist in the ring around the rosy of insurance deals and mm being told I need an x-ray before I can get an MRI. And 
I'm no doctor, but I knew for a fact that I didn't need an x-ray. I needed an MRI. And I just don't like the Western approach to medical care Mm -hmm. at all. So that's kind of what started spurring me was that uh, to find an alternate source was just the aggravation of having to play ring around the rosy with getting a real diagnosis outside of, yeah, your knee is injured. Let's stick a needle in it and see if it feels better. Okay. Gotcha, man. And then uh, what was it that ultimately led you to reach out to us after that period of time? Because obviously you had been dealing with the injury for quite a while, kind of um, trying to manage things on your own and that sort of stuff. But what was that like tipping point, if anything? Uh, Honestly, the tipping point was you had a Instagram advertisement for a knee screen. And I knew as soon as I saw it that I was going to probably sign up with you. But I was just like, you know, this is just is just screaming at me that I need to go and check this out. Um, but like reading your story and kind of knowing your background a lot more than probably the next the person next to me. Um, I felt you were like the missing link in the physical therapy world. Um, sort of like in the medical world, they need to have a better understanding of nutrition and application of nutrition to, you know, help with the root cause of most issues. I feel like more physical therapists need to understand um, strength and resistance training outside of just how to rehabilitate a joint or rehabilitate a certain part of the body. I feel like more physical therapists need to understand how to actually train the body to be strong in totality um, through, around, and post-injury. And that's what I kind of gathered that you are all about. Um, And then you proved me right every step of the way. Awesome, man. And then can you just go over kind of uh, what your experience was like with us and some of like the results that you saw, what you thought about the overall process, um, maybe like what worked really well for you compared to other um, forays into the healthcare field beforehand? I think the most, like the biggest reason for success is that you are really on top of everything. So not only like coming in to our in-person sessions um, and doing some of the manual therapy and and the exercises together and and you explaining why we're doing things and what the road ahead is going to look like. Um, You just were there, you know, answering text messages, answering questions outside of our, um, our, our meeting, um, which really helped my brain stay on track, especially um, in the rehabilitation process. You know, some of the days, some of the weeks, feel really painful, um, feel really uncomfortable. And, you know, if you don't have somebody in your corner letting you know that that's normal, um, I feel like myself and most people would feel like they're regressing and stop trying or stop putting forth the mental and physical effort to get better because their brain just tells them this is painful, we need to stop, so you should stop. And logically thinking, I feel like most people would also think like, okay, this hurts. I need to stop. So having you in the corner, letting me know, like, this is the kind of pain that you're going through. I, as your, um, your provider expect this to happen. And then I expect X, Y, and Z to happen later. So you were really clear with what to expect through the process of recovery. Um, especially utilizing the methods that we used. It was a great way to feel confident in what I was doing. Um, and on that too, it's not like you ignored that I was in pain. You, you know, we're making sure that we're modifying exercises the correct way so we can get, you know, good range of motion and turn pain into I, what I'll say therapeutic discomfort. Um, but you were really on top of making sure that each week we were making progression, but not progressing it so fast that it was getting away from us at the same time. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, whether you're talking about the rehab process or just like training in general, lifting all that sort of stuff. It's, we always want things to happen like super quickly and like very linearly, just like get better week after week after week. Uh, until yeah. you're a hundred percent. And like, uh, the reality is like life is messy. Rehab and training are messy. Like some days stuff is going to hurt more than other days. And we absolutely expect to see those like fluctuations either day to day, week to week with, uh, any like rehab or training program. And I know that when I've dealt with that as like uh, an Olympic weightlifter, it can be frustrating as hell. Like you have a couple like bad weeks of training, you're like, damn it. Like I'm not making any progress. Yeah. I'm putting in all this time and effort. And you're like, 
what the hell? And then you have to like sit back, like communicate with the coach and like, all right, this is part of the process is what happens. And um, having that objective third party can like do wonders for just like mental headspace during that time. I think that's, that brings kind of a good point is you're an amazing doctor of physical therapy, but you're a coach too. So you're able to really coach the knowledge that you have and the expertise and um, experience that you have. You're really able to take that and break that down to somebody who's not a doctor of physical therapy and make it really understandable and relatable at the same time. Um, and in my profession now as a strength and conditioning coach and personal trainer, um, I've taken a lot of lessons from our time together and have been able to implement that myself with my clients and help with a prehab processes to keep my clients feeling healthy and feeling strong um, in and out of hard training sessions. So it's been more than just getting an injury to get better. It's been a wealth of knowledge that I'm able to use for myself and in my profession, which has been, you know, priceless. Awesome, man. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. Uh, and then like, uh, what were the actual like results that you did see during the course of uh, our time working together on your knee injury? Uh, the biggest result when I first started with you, I don't even think I could shift laterally to the left, like at all. Um, and now I can do a full Cossack squat to both sides unassisted, um, which is awesome. Um, and just in general, like putting load into the knee, it, I'm so I'm able to do that. But the lateral movement was like where before we started working together, I thought I was done forever because, you know, I could squat okay and squatting's awesome, but not having all planes of motion in life, whether you're an athlete or not, not being able to move in a plane of motion is mm. very limiting and very defeating feeling. So it was amazing to see that progress more than anything, just being able to manipulate the joint to move my body in ways that I want to move and should be able to move and, and deserve to move. Awesome, man. And then how's like your lifting and grappling and all that sort of stuff been since we um, kind of like ended our in-person work together? Oh, phenomenal. Um, I still do a lot of the, um, what I guess would now just be called prehab, but I still do a lot of my rehab stuff just cause I know it's good for me. Um, and it always sucks when I do it. So I know I'm doing something good. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's helped my training and my mentality of even like getting, cause there's, I don't think there's any time in an athlete's career where they're not like going to have, you know, nagging injuries every once in a while or even mm -hmm. constantly. Um, so it's helped me just with the mindset of training while injured, but training correctly while injured and, and training the injury to recover instead of putting a bandaid on it or, trying to train around it. Um, I feel like you really can't train around an injury as much as you can train the injury to rehab it and get it better through a process. And that's, that's the biggest thing that I've really taken away is that injuries are going to happen, but there's always a way to plan, um, plan the injury rehab into your normal training schedule. So you can still feel like you're doing what you like to do while doing the things that you need to do at the same time. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, it's funny when you kind of learn what people think about like what physical therapy is or what like rehab is and stuff like that. And I think that um, one of like the biggest shifts that I had in my own mind after going through PT school and after like working with people and all that sort of stuff is that um, I do kind of like training and rehab on like the same spectrum. They're just at mm. like slightly different ends. So like rehab is basically just training in the presence of an injury and there's not necessarily like specific just rehab drills or just train drills they all kind of fall on the spectrum so learning how to like blend that and make an actual effective rehab program for like a lifter or an athlete like you it it's going to look very different than someone who just has uh, a much more sedentary lifestyle like no or minimal like physical demands and stuff like that so i always uh kind of laugh whenever I'm working with like athletes uh, and this might be their first time in this sort of PT setting. They're like, Oh, this just seems like a workout. I thought it was just like going to be a rehab. I'm like, well, it's kind of the same thing. Just yeah. different, different grades of that. So yeah, I, mean, I agree with that hundred percent. 
Yeah. And then like, what's next for you as far as um, training, competing, grappling? Where do you see yourself kind of going forward now? So my uh, jujitsu coach and I are actually working right now currently uh, on a full-time training camp to go to the ADCC um, open trials in New Jersey next month, which is one of the more bigger world renowned grappling competitions. It's going to be probably the biggest competition that I've ever done. Um, so we're going to go in and test the waters and see where I'm at in the rankings of at least new England to start and keep climbing from there. So pretty much ever since I got back on track with my injury and started to feel quote unquote normal again, um, or as I like to joke the the normal amount of pain that I'm usually <laughs> in, um, I just kind of shifted my focus to be a more competitive athlete um, because, you know, I'm 33 years old now. I'm not getting any younger, but I'm also not out of my prime yet. At, I, at least I don't feel that I am. Um, so it's just given me a new light to take advantage of the opportunities to see what my body can do while I'm still um, young. Yeah, absolutely, man. What are you hoping to like What's the thing, dude? Do you want to compete at like the national level or like international I would like, or what? I would like to. So after, if you place in this tournament, you get invited to the nationals, and then from there you go to worlds. So I mean, in my fantasy, in my fantasy, I'd like to go all the way to the worlds. Uh, but one step at a time. I I don't really have my eyes set too far past next month so i'm just kind of focusing on that but that's that's the name of the game is to try to climb the jujitsu brackets as hard as i can and then potentially get back into um mma in 2024 which um has been something that's been on my mind for quite some time especially after um the rehab on the knee and honestly i i feel like the rehab process that I went through with you and what I've learned with you has just helped my training get better in general. So I feel better all the time. I know, um, like I said, like working, implementing strategies to help even the minor injuries that I get, you know, my recovery is so much faster. I'm able to get back into more intense training sooner rather than later when those things do arise. So I'm really just going to take, um, all my lessons and, and run with it and just try to see how far I can go in the sports that I love to practice and compete in. Awesome, man. I, I honestly love to hear that. Um, and then like, kind of like last question for is if you had to, uh, say something to like past, like Sam a couple months before, like coming to work with us or somebody who might be like dealing with an injury, whether they're a lifter, combat sport athlete, anybody else that's, um, just like unsure, like what they should do or about coming to work with us or anything like that. Like, what would you say to either yourself in that situation, having gone through the rehab process or to that other person? Don't hesitate. Cause I could have been on this path of getting after it like a year earlier instead of waiting around and sitting in my misery. I, you know, I definitely should have just taken more initiative to find the answer to my solution. Um, and do more digging on my end. So I'd say, you know, if you think you're, if you think you found something, go and try it out. Uh, like I said, I, I signed up with you just through a free knee screen. Um, you know, things like, like opportunities like that, go take them and see if that, if that doctor or that professional clicks with you. Um, but you know, you're definitely in our area. I, the only physical therapist whose concentration is, with athletes and people who like to lift weights and have that lifestyle. So I, even outside of somebody who is an athlete, like if you like going to the gym three to six times a week and you're a fitness enthusiast, like, you know, bar barbell PT is the way to go for that person as well too. Um, and be your own advocate. Don't, don't let, anyone tell you how you should get treated or when you should get treated, but you know, know that you should probably go get treated, but be your own advocate at that at the same time and, and voice, voice your opinions. Cause now that I've had an experience with more traditional PTs versus um, working with you, I definitely can advocate that 
You know, I, I don't need to stop training just because I'm injured and I, I don't need to stop, you know, um, deadlifting and squatting and, and hitting the bench press and doing the things that I like to do in the gym, mm. um, because of an injury, it's just, it's not true. Um, so I think doing a little bit of your own research and working with somebody whose um, vision falls in line with yours is definitely crucial in the rehab process. Um, but I, like I said, I don't think anybody in this area is going to top what you do for people who enjoy weightlifting or athletics. Awesome. Thank you, man. Uh, I really appreciate that. And uh, thank you for spending the time with me to kind of talk through your case and kind of give some insight into that. I, I definitely appreciate all that stuff. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, uh, I'm sure we'll be talking soon. And if you ever need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Okay. hundred percent, my man. I appreciate everything you've done for me. Thank you, man. All right. I'll see you. See ya.